Looking to host your own Gary's Mode server? For either you and your friends, or a public server, but don't know how? Don't worry, today I'm going to show you how. In order to acquire the server tools, we'll need to install Steam CMD. I'll provide a link to the webpage in the description. When you're on the website, scroll down to download in Steam CMD. Because I'm on Windows, I'm going to download the Windows version. I recommend making a folder for where you want to install it. Go to your download zip file and extract the executable. Put it where you want it to install, then run it. Wait for the program to download and install. Now we got Steam CMD ready to go. But before we can download the dedicated server, you need to ask yourself, where do you want the server installed to? By default, Steam CMD will download programs in the same location as itself, as seen here. If you would like the server to be installed somewhere else, enter the command on screen, along with where you want it to be installed. If this is the first time you're installing something here, check the location to see if it made a Steam Apps folder. Now that you've chosen a location to download to if you wanted to change it, we're now ready to actually start downloading the server. Fortunately, you're not required to log into your Steam account to download it, so you're going to log in as Anonymous, then wait for it to sign in. Once you're logged in, type in app underscore update 4020. If you want to verify the integrity of the files after downloading, type in validate and then hit enter. This can take a while depending on your download speed. When the server has finished downloading, we should test run it to make sure it works. Go to where you download the server, then access the Steam Apps folder, select Common, and then Gary's Mod DS. Open Command Prompt, head back to File Explorer and copy the Gary's Mod DS location. Because I didn't install the server on the same drive as Windows, we need to change the drive letter and directory that Command Prompt is looking. To change the drive letter, type in the letter and then a colon. To change the directory to the server, type in CD and then the server location. If you don't want to deal with the CD mess, you can instead head to File Explorer. While holding down Shift, right click, select Open PowerShell window here, and then immediately enter CMD. All the commands we will use in Command Prompt will also work in here. To start the server, type in srcds.exe. We will set plus max players to 8. Dash console to get access to the server console. Plus game mode, sandbox. Set the map using plus map. We will do gm underscore construct. Hit enter to start it. If you see socket bind failed, chances are you have another program or server currently communicating on the same port number as the gmod server. Either stop the program that's using it or change the port number of your gmod server using dash port and a new port number, as seen on screen. Give your server access through the firewall, when asked to. When you see the public IP in the server console, the server is ready for you to connect. To connect to your server, open the developer console in Gary's Mod, and type connect, and then the local IP address of the server. If you don't know what the local IP is, I'll show you how to get it. On the computer that's hosting the server, open a new command prompt window and type ipconfig. The local IP address you need is the IPv4 address. Type that in and then hit enter. As you can see, we are connected to the server. While our server works, you probably want people outside your house to be able to connect to it, assuming you weren't trying to make a LAN server. This is what port forwarding allows. There's two ways I'm aware of to do this. Number one, access the control panel using the router's local IP address. I'll be using that method. Number two, contact your ISP to do it. You'll probably end up having to do that if they loaned you the router. To get the IP of the router, Go back to command prompt to where we entered IP config, and then look at default gateway. Copy that address and then put it in a web browser. If there's a login screen, enter the login information. If you don't know what it is, go to the router and check it. The default username and password may be located on the bottom of the router. If not, you can try looking it up. When you're in the control panel, go to the section where you do port forwarding. For my router specifically, I went to forwarding and then virtual servers. You're going to need to know which port to forward, the IP address that you're forwarding to. Make sure you forward on both TCP and UDP protocol. There's a very high chance you probably want to mount Counter-Strike Source. Here's how to mount supported games. In your Gary's Mod server, go to the Gary's Mod folder, and then the CFG folder, then open mount.cfg in a text editor. Look at the address for C-Strike. 
updated to the correct location. Both the dedicated server and client versions of these should work. When you're done, depending on which ones you set up, remove the forward slashes on the left. Otherwise, these lines will be ignored by the game. If we open server.cfg, we can set additional server information. Hostname is the name of the server. SV underscore password is the password required to connect. If you don't want the server to have a password, ignore this. Archon underscore password is the password used to do server commands from the client. Your Archon password should be extremely complex to avoid clients from easily guessing the password, and issuing commands as if they were the server. To add workshop mods to the server, type in plus host underscore workshop underscore collection, and then type in the collection ID. The collection ID is the numbers at the end of a collection address. To change the game mode, replace sandbox with the name of it. If you don't know what to exactly type, switch to the game mode in the client, and then look in the console. The text within the parentheses is what you need to type. For the name of the map, the map names here is what you would type. If you start a server with a collection ID, the mods will download or update if needed. If you password protected your server and you're trying to connect using the console, after the connect command, add a semicolon, and then password, then your password. Welcome to a prop hunt server. Hey, there's the server. I hope this video sets you up with a basic server that you can work off of. Thank you for watching.